Once you've got your license activated, the next step is to calibrate your system. Make sure that the mic is plugged into your audio interface. Obviously, we need phantom power. We need to disable direct monitoring and make sure to use the same interface for the microphone that you're using for the speakers and set your sample rate. Next page, we select the microphone, and if you haven't already, you can get your profile for the actual microphone you have by entering the serial number and downloading it from the site, and you can click here for the Add Profile window to add it in manually. Once you've got the profile for your mic in place, move on, and you're asked to select the input channel. In my case, I'm using a multiple input interface so I'm using input eight, and we can see we're getting signal. Now next page, we need to play a little test tone back. Please adjust amplifier volume. My voice should sound in normal conversation volume. Left speaker, right speaker. Now my VO is summed to mono, so you might not have heard that left, right, but it did play back through the appropriate channels. Now you may need to adjust either your speaker volume or your mic gain to get the proper level, but next is this test with the Microphone positioned right in the sweet spot, and I have it right behind my head at the moment. Again, you may not be getting that stereo imaging, but it is testing the left and right. Next are some tests for measurement and distance, and we'll start it now with the left speaker. So you can see you're prompted for each step of the way. Let's go to the next page, and then we'll do the right speaker. Next, once we confirm everything's okay, it's another sweet spot measurement. Next is a series of 24 measurements, and we need to reposition the mic for each, and I'll be guided with each one when we need to, and where we need to move it to. So let's start, and I need to have it in the blue zone, and let's start. Finally, after going through all the measurements, we're done and we've got a profile that's been created. So all that's left to do now is save it and then load it into the DAW plugin. And within your DAW, it's a simple matter of calling up and loading the profile that you've saved and then obviously enabling it. And we can calibrate to flat response or you can have a slight curve and you can see it represented there if you want. Or there's various options for predefined generic types of curves. And in my case, it defaulted to lowering the gain by 12 dB, but I can easily override that by taking that off, and then I can move that back up if I want to do that. And using the dry-wet mix, which is best to leave up full, but you do have that if you want. And you can even simulate different types of curves instead of using the custom curve that's created. Or in advanced mode, we can tweak the calibration some more. It works on your stereo output in zero latency mode, or we can switch to linear phase mode, which will induce some latency or a combination of the two. But it's a good idea to get started with flat mode and get used to mixing with it. And if you're working with headphones, click here and you can load a headphone profile. And it works similarly where it'll bring in a curve and you mix into that. So Sonarworks Reference 4, definitely worth investing some time in, not only calibrating your room, but getting used to mixing with, because yes, it does translate well when you listen back on other speakers.